Let's take a look at the empirical formula for sucrose. That's table sugar, the sugar we cook with. We'll also look at the molecular formula and the structural formula for sucrose. So let's start with the molecular formula. That's the number of each type of atom we have in a molecule. So if we look at a molecule of sucrose, this is the molecular formula. We have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygen atoms, and they're bonded together. We really can't tell how they're bonded together though, just looking at this. For that, we need a structural formula. And this gives us a general kind of 3D idea of how the atoms are connected together. So we still have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. They're just depicted here in this diagram. And not all the carbons and hydrogens are shown here in the diagram. We have carbons here where we have these joining together, and there's some hydrogens as well that aren't shown. Finally, the empirical formula. That's the simplest whole number ratio. So we're really looking for a whole number ratio from our molecular formula here. The problem is with this molecular formula, we can't reduce this down any further. We can't divide each number by say the smallest number, 11, and get whole numbers. It just doesn't work. For that reason, the empirical formula, it's the same as the molecular formula. So for sucrose, there's not a difference between the molecular formula and the empirical formula because this is already the lowest ratio for these atoms here. This is Dr. B with the empirical formula for sucrose. We also looked at the molecular formula here and the structural formula. Thanks for watching.